Welcome into Extra Time. Two of my favourite people with us today, Ian Dark and Frank LaBeouf. Uh, Frank, the first question for you. Who was better as a holding midfielder for France? Patrick Vieira or Claude Makélélé? Oh, that's a question you have to... Uh, it's like you have to choose between your mother and your father. Uh, they, they've been absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I played, I played many times against Patrick, even if I played sometimes with him. And I shared my first cap with friends with Claude Makélélé, but otherwise I never played too much against him. Uh, I'm sure that Real Madrid won the Champions League because Claude Makélélé was in the midfield. But Patrick Vieira was absolutely outstanding with, the, with Arsenal the whole year that he was there. And because I played so many times against him and I saw his influence in the midfield zone uh, for the Gunners, I will pick uh, Patrick Vieira. Who are you going for, Ian? Oh, of those two, uh, that's a difficult choice. Um, I think I think I'd go with Frank. I think I think Vieira. He was such a monumental player for the club, a driving force from midfield. Oh, if that's the wrong answer, the uh, correct answer was Claude Makélélé. Uh, apparently, <laughs> uh, if there's one rule <laughs> you, you could change but in soccer, what would it be and why? What, what, Ian? Sorry, what was the question, Dan? Repeat the question. I, I only heard the last uh, bit if, of it. If you could change one rule in soccer, right. what would it be and why? Uh, right, the, the rule change I would make would be to the away goals rule, I think, which I can't see the sense of these days. If a tie is finished 2-2, say, a semi-final of the Champions League on aggregate, um, then I think you should go to a penalty shootout after extra time. I don't see why the away goals count more than the home goals anymore. I mean, that was that was a, a rule dreamt up years ago when away teams went to just put up, a, well, park the bus, as they say these days. That doesn't happen anymore. And, and home teams are starting to think that nil-nil is not a bad result because they could nick it with an away goal. So I'd scrap that. Interesting, Frank. Uh, for me, it will be m more simple rule, which is the throwing. I don't understand the meaning of the throwing where um, we are football players. Um, and I don't understand why suddenly you have to take the ball with your hands where um, you could have put on the, on the, the ball on the line and, uh, and just carry on playing like you, you play a corner kick or a goal kick or whatever it is when you start another, a new action. So there is, for me, a possibility to, to change that because there is it's a, a complete no sense to play uh, again for football players the ball with the hands. Frank, who was the most important leader in your dressing room during the 98 World Cup? Oh, um, everybody. We had all a big ego. So we all talk together at the same time, <laughs> uh, but uh, but I have to I have to say we had one captain and it was Didier Deschamps, and uh, he he was the real leader. He was very good. Um, just just so you know, in '98, well we won. We had luck, but we we were fantastic. But with the final of the 2000 um, European Championship, nobody. In fact, believed that we could uh, come back from the, from the Italians and the one that they they, they, they were leading off. And uh, and Gigi Gisson was the only one who believed. They said, "Come on!" And Robert Pires came on, Sylvain Witteau came on. He was the only one who believed that we could do it. And he was hammering everybody and um, hoping that everybody will keep on going on. And he well, he was a real leader. He was a real captain. Now, Gigi Gisson, out of my, Monsieur. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ian, what's the harshest thing that you have said when commentating? Oh, well, I always try to be kind to players and, and have a bit of, of empathy with them. But um, I, I remember as commentators, we were very irked at the 1998 World Cup when Romania decided that they would all dye their hair blonde. You might remember that. So it made it a nightmare to, to identify their players because they, they all look pretty much the same out there. So they were going out against Croatia and I was commentating. I think the game was in Nantes. And um, I couldn't resist saying with a minute to go that Romania were going to leave the tournament unlamented by the commentary community. 
And uh, I think there was proof here that blondes don't always have more fun. I remember that. I remember when all that can happen. Uh, Frank, um, <laughs> how much attention did you have to what commentators said? What's the harshest thing that anyone's ever said about you or written about you? Oh, let's say that I was on the field, though I didn't hear. <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you come back true. to me that somebody was that was very harsh. Um, I think Alan Ensen one day was pretty harsh on me and uh, saying that I was uh, I wasn't good. Uh, I don't know the terms exactly, but um, yeah, maybe once uh, Alan Ensen I would say that, but uh, I'm not even resentful towards him. So no, I don't have any any clear evidence of somebody being harsh on me. Ask Frank, which team was better, Arsenal's Invincibles or Manchester United 1999 treble winning team who also won hat-trick league titles? As a player, which one would you prefer, the Invincibles or the treble winners? I, I didn't play against the Invincible, I was already gone. I played against the 99 and um, even if we had a fantastic season with Chelsea because I think we, we lost only three games during the season, uh, those guys were unstoppable. Uh, they were absolutely fantastic, and uh, um, there was a, a maturity uh, in in the squad because they they've been playing for for many years all together. So it's uh, it was as really impressive uh, when uh, when we played against them all the time. We played against them, so I would go for the '99 because I played against them, uh, even if it always or almost always has been a nightmare to play against the Gunners, especially um, in the former stadium. Sorry, I forgot the name and I'm, I'm sorry for the Gunners. <laughs> Ivory. That's all right. Ivory is, is what it was. Ivory. Right? Thank you. Uh, Ian? Thank you. Of those two, I think, I mean, they're two fabulous teams. To go through a 38-game season unbeaten as Arsenal did is out of this world, really. But, I mean, Forced to choose, I'd say, the Manchester United treble winning side. But So, to not only win the title, but the FA Cup and the Champions League and in the same season as well, that takes some doing. And um, so, I think, given that choice, that Manchester United team of 99 would shade it. Uh, let's uh, shift gears slightly now. Let's talk about holidays, shall we, Frank? What's your favourite country to visit? USA, <laughs> USA. I, I, <laughs> France is a fantastic country, and I really think, really think it's the best country in the world because uh, we can go not too far and having different landscape and uh, uh, even wine, food, and everything. But I think the 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 countryside in the U.S. is absolutely fantastic. Everywhere you go, you can find absolutely fantastic uh, uh, landscape. So. Uh, very interesting because it's so vast, you say that, that uh, you can discover mm -hmm. fantastic places without seeing anybody, being in the middle of a forest and, and, and it, can be, it can be very, very wide. So I would say the USA, yeah. But you just talked about France for 10 hours, you didn't mention anything about USA. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, don't worry, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Ian, what's your favourite country to visit? Don't say England. <laughs> well, uh, Frank and I are going to sound a bit like a Tweedledee and Tweedledum here a bit because I was going to say the USA as well. Um, I do love my, my visits over there, particularly New York. I've got a real soft spot for New York. I hope that doesn't upset anyone in any other city. Chicago. <laughs> San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Have I covered enough there? No, I, lo I love going to the, to the United States, both to, to uh, be on vacation and, and to work as well. But in Europe, I think I'd have to say Spain because it always seems to be sunny. And I do like playing golf and you can't move for golf courses in Spain. <laughs> and the food's better in Spain as well, isn't it, Ian? It is rather nice, yeah. Yeah, you're right about that, Dan. You're, you're particularly yeah. partial, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, much better than France. Okay, final point. What would you, what would you prefer, Frank? This is a good question for you My to end God. the week. My France God. winning Come on. the next Euros or Chelsea winning the Champions League? France to win the next European Championships or Chelsea to win the European Cup? 
I would be very selfish. Chelsea to win the next Champions League. Wow. Like that the 2018 wow. couldn't do the same that we did in 98 and 2000. <laughs> That's it. So selfish. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's it. Your appearance money will start going down if France keep winning more international titles. I know. And then when I do some commercials, you know, I, can, I cannot ask uh, more money than I used to anymore. So, so it's why I don't want them to win anymore. I'm kidding. <laughs> I love it. I love the honesty. Thank you very much, boys. Have a great weekend. Just a reminder, uh, we'll be back on Monday for more of this. Until then, take care. Goodbye. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.